The aim of this video is to describe a protocol which will allow the creation of an aseptic environment for the practice of implant surgery. We will describe the techniques of gowning and gloving as well as draping a patient. The integrity of the aseptic field is maintained by identifying the role of the surgical assistant and surgeon who work within the aseptic area and the roving assistant who passes sterile instruments and items into the area, thus ensuring that no contamination of the aseptic environment takes place by contact with non-sterile objects or persons. A sequence of events and a protocol will be outlined to establish and maintain the aseptic field. The work surfaces are cleaned using a proprietary disinfectant and wiped thoroughly. The patient is prepared by requesting that they clean their teeth by brushing thoroughly using a chlorhexidine gel for two minutes, followed by a rinse with a chlorhexidine mouthwash for a further two minutes. Prior to surgery, the patient will have seen a hygienist to ensure that the mouth is healthy and free from inflammation. The sealed plastic cover of the drapes pack is removed. outer wrapping of the drapes pack is opened and the pack containing the gowns is carefully separated and placed to one side on the work surface. The pack containing the drapes is separated from the outer wrapping and placed on the work surface closer to the patient. Please note the way that the assistant holds the drapes pack so that she does not contaminate the wrapping. This will ensure that she will not contaminate her gloves when she opens this pack after gowning and gloving. The gowns pack is opened carefully by using the folded tags to prevent a contamination of the sterile contents. The surgical assistant now prepares herself to work within the aseptic field that will be created. She begins by putting on her hat, protective glasses and mask to protect both herself and the patient from cross-contamination. The sterile gloves pack is opened and they are placed on the open gowns pack without touching the inner packet. All jewellery and watches must be removed from the fingers, hands and wrists. The surgical assistant will now begin to wash her hands. A chlorohexidine soap is used to disinfect the hands. Alternatively, an iodine based soap such as betadine can be used. The hands wrists and forearms are washed for two minutes. The assistant will ensure that all the surfaces of the hands are thoroughly washed. This includes the palms of her hands, the areas between the fingers and thumbs, and the fingernails, which must be short. The brush can also be used for scrubbing the wrists and forearms. The hands are rinsed with the water running from the fingers to the elbow. The water is allowed to drip off the elbows by keeping the hands pointed upwards. The tap is turned off using the elbow to ensure that the clean hands are not contaminated. The sterile towel is used to dry the hands, working from the hand to the wrist and then to the forearm. The towel is discarded and the second towel is picked up using the dry hand. The second hand is dried using the same sequence. This prevents the hands from being contaminated by the elbows. The sterile gown will be picked up by the surgical assistant, leaving the second gown untouched and uncontaminated for the surgeon. The gown, which is folded in a specific way, is positioned so the hands can be inserted into the recesses on each side and pushed through to the sleeves, allowing the gown to unfold, making sure that there is no contact with a non-sterile object. The non-sterile roving assistant then secures the preliminary ties of the gown. 
The surgical assistant will not allow her hands to emerge from the cuffs of the sleeves before the gloving procedure. The aim of this procedure is to contact the inner portion of the gown only without contaminating the sterile outer surface. The closed technique for gloving is considered to be the most suitable for preventing a breach in asepsis. The packet of gloves is picked up and opened using the sleeves of the gown. The glove for the right hand is picked up and placed on the sleeve with the fingers pointing towards the elbow and with the thumb of the glove adjacent to the thumb which is still inside the sleeve. The glove's cuff is gripped through the sleeve by the right hand. The other side of the cuff is gripped again through the sleeve and pulled over the end of the sleeve. The hand is then pushed through the cuff into the glove by pulling gently upon the sleeve. The glove for the left hand is now picked up and placed on the left sleeve with the fingers to the elbow and the thumb to thumb. The final tie of the gown is completed with the help of the roving assistant. The non-sterile end of the tag is pulled away from the tie and handed to the roving assistant. The surgical assistant turns through 360 degrees, holds the other sterile tie, pulling it out of the tag and completes tying the gown. The surgical assistant now opens the drapes pack which is still sterile. The first surface drape is unfolded and the adhesive strip exposed as demonstrated. The drape is allowed to unfold without any contact with a non-sterile surface and carefully positioned over the work surface using the adhesive strip to secure it. Care must be taken not to touch the work surface with the sterile gloves. The contents of the drapes pack are placed on the drape. The cover sleeve for the Mayo table is slipped over the tray, unfolding the sleeve as it is progressively covered. The surgical assistant inserts her hand under the fold of the sleeve to prevent contamination. The outside of the fold is considered to be contaminated. The contents of the drapes pack are identified. The clear plastic sleeves for the suction are separated, as are other adhesive strips, which may be used for securing items to the patient drape. The suction tip, plastic tray, gauze, light handle covers, and additional drapes are sorted. Instruments may be sterilized in an autoclave, double bagged, and autoclaved again to the recommended protocol in a vacuum autoclave with a drying cycle. Alternatively, Instruments may be used directly from an autoclave, sterilized at the recommended temperature and pressure. The use of double-bagged instruments will be demonstrated here. The roving assistant opens the outer bag, presenting the surgical assistant with the inner sterile pack, which is taken, placed upon the sterile drape, and opened. Additional instruments are passed over, maintaining the barrier between the sterile and non-sterile environments which have been created. The roving assistant always opens the non-sterile outer packing, handing over or dropping the sterile inner instrument or pack. In this way, syringes, blades and sutures, as well as larger packs such as implant insertion kits can be passed over. Betadine solution to be used for the patient's skin preparation is poured into a porcelain dish without the dispenser coming into contact with the dish. The patient is now prepared by the roving assistant. A hat is used to cover hair, which has previously been tied up. A nasal cannula, 
which will supply oxygen at the rate of two liters per minute, is placed in the nostrils and the tube positioned over the ears. Protective glasses are put on and secured using micropore adhesive tape to prevent either the glasses or the nasal cannula from being displaced. The surgical assistant will now prepare the patient while the surgeon washes his hands, gowns and puts on his gloves. An adhesive drape is used to cover and protect the patient's clothes. It's attached using the adhesive tape without the surgical assistant directly touching the patient. A sterile piece of gauze in a pair of forceps is used as a swab to clean the circumoral soft tissues. The skin is cleaned starting at the lips, followed by the chin, cheeks, nose, and finally the nostrils in a pattern that ensures the greatest cleanliness nearest the mouth. The betadine is allowed to dry. The patient is now draped with the help of the roving assistant. The drape is positioned on the patient and unfolded making sure that the opening for the mouth is correctly positioned. The roving assistant only touches the underside of the drape. The surgeon and the surgical assistant will now attach the adhesive drape to the patient. The adhesive drape is prepared by peeling off the protective sheet. The surgical assistant places a scalpel and the lip and cheek retractor close to hand in preparation for this procedure. The surgeon and the assistant hold this drape over the patient's mouth, the inner portion is peeled, and the surgeon and the assistant seat the drape, ensuring that it is kept taut. The clear adhesive tape is cut and attached to the patient's skin and the patient drape. The remaining outer sheet is removed from the drape, and the lip retractor put into position, providing access to the intraoral operative site. The light handle covers are placed over the light handles, making sure the surgical assistant does not touch the non-sterile light. This allows either the surgeon or the surgical assistant to adjust the light during the procedure. The basic principles that have been established to maintain this barrier between the sterile and non-sterile environments are used to drape the suction tube. The roving assistant holds the tube, the surgical assistant attaches the suction tip to the tube and slips the sterile clear sleeve over the suction tip. The roving assistant holds on to a portion of the folded end and feeds the tube in. The surgical assistant then secures the tube to the patient's drape using holders which do not perforate the patient's drape. This will prevent the suction tube from slipping off the drape. The motor cable may be draped in a similar manner to the suction tube if it is non-sterile. In this instance, the motor and the cable have been sterilized. The motor cable is attached to the motor by the surgical assistant.
cannula for internal irrigation is inserted into the sterile bag of saline by the surgical assistant and the bag handed to the roving assistant. The roving assistant hangs the bag and inserts the tubing over the rotors of the peristatic pump which will pump the sterile saline into the internal irrigation cannula. The surgical instruments are sorted into those that are required for incision and reflection, wound closure and osteotomy preparation. The implant insertion kit is now opened and the surgery can now begin in an aseptic environment. Establishing an aseptic area with an effective barrier between the sterile and non-sterile greatly facilitates surgery under ideal conditions. The operator and surgical assistant can freely work together in the sterile zone while the roving assistant remains outside, passing only instruments that are sterile across the barrier without contaminating the sterile zone. Surgery can therefore be safely performed in the proper aseptic environment. <laughs>